Question four, Willie Rennie. Uh, we have benefited from a UK-wide unity behind the message so far, but I've always been prepared to support doing things differently in Scotland if need be. However, I am nervous about England and Scotland diverging from each other because it may compromise the clarity that has so far saved lives. To justify a significantly different message, the scientific consensus needs to be significantly different too. So to settle my nerves and provide us all with the reassurance that I think we need, will the First Minister get her advisers to set out the details of the scientific difference between Scotland and England? First Minister. Let me come on to that point generally, and I hope I can uh, offer something that is, is helpful in this regard. But can I say, first of all, and again, I don't say this in any pejorative or judgmental way. It's simply a statement of fact. Of the four UK nations, three of us, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, have decided to stick with the current stay-at-home message. One, uh, England, has decided to move a bit quicker out of, of lockdown. And, and that is entirely legitimate. They are absolutely entitled to do that. I am not criticising that. But to, to somehow, and I, I'm not suggesting Willie Rennie did this, but I've heard others suggest that Scotland has somehow broken away from a four nations approach is just not the case. And I think it's really important to be clear on that. Now, in, in terms of the data that, that drives this, you know, we publish data on a, a daily basis on case numbers, uh, hospital admissions, ICU admissions, uh, death numbers. We, we have published in the documents that we uh, have put into the public domain in recent weeks. We've shown the trends in all of that. Uh, that data is then used to estimate what is called the R number, the reproduction uh, rate. Um, we use modelling output from a, a number of academic sources to validate uh, the estimates we are making for the R number. And like uh, the UK government does for, for England, we give that number in a range because the advice is it's because of the confidence in intervals, it's more reliable to do it in that way, although I'm as anxious as anybody to get to more definition uh, of that. The, the helpful thing I uh, could offer if uh, people are interested, if opposition uh, members want, I will arrange a, a a technical briefing from the government statisticians to explain in a bit more depth how the R number is calculated. Um, and I think that because it is a very technical exercise, but it's, it's basically done the same way in, in all countries. We don't make up how we do it here uh, differently. But the fundamental point here, I guess, is, is this one, because you can look at all that data, and I'm happy to, for opposition members to look at that data just as, as, as I do. But ultimately, you, as a, a leader, you still have to apply your judgment to it and you have to make decisions um, because that's what people have elected me to do and these judgments weigh very heavily right now but but the science will inform those judgments they can't make the decisions for you and my judgment right now is that the data is saying to me that the progress we've made is real but it is still too fragile and the risk if we lift restrictions too soon is that the virus could run quickly out of control again so i am choosing i am making the judgment and i will uh, stand accountable for it, uh, that it is better now to err on the side of caution. Because if I get that judgment wrong, because these things are not certain, I would rather the price of uh, getting that wrong is that people stay in lockdown for a few more days and that the price is not measured in unnecessary deaths. So that's the judgment I'm making. Um, and I think it's the right one. But anybody is entitled to say that a different judgment, coming out of lockdown quicker, you know, getting people back to work quicker is what we should be doing and we, sh we can have that debate. But ultimately, political leadership, particularly at a time of crisis, is about exercising your judgment and making the decisions that are designed to keep people as safe as possible. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. Will you ready? That is, that is a helpful response. And I think seeing some of that data and getting access to the scientists and their judgment about whether it is significantly different, I think will help inform the debate. And if the Prime Minister was here, I would ask him exactly the same question because he's got to be held to account for the judgments that he's taken too about that divergence. Part of the difficulty is that there's a lack of testing in Scotland, so the confidence in that R number, I think, has to be less. And the margin of error, as ministers have quite rightly highlighted, is still quite significant. So to have the confidence in it, we need to be able to see the data and hear the analysis as well. The First Minister wants people to continue to stay at home. We will, I will support her in amplifying that message. But we also need to know what is next. I assume that we will have to ease the lockdown
before we have a vaccine or a cure. The calculation of how much and when and at what level of risk will need to be made by the First Minister and her ministers. So when will the government set out that plan with the level of detail that's been set out by governments across the globe? When will the testing and tracing capacity be ready for that? What will the new slogan be? What will follow stay at home? There's a lot uh, in there, but I'll be as brief as I, I can be. So on the R number, um, I am anxious that we get uh, to a position where we can uh, publish estimates of the R number more regularly and narrow that range as much as possible. And you know, as, as time goes on, we will be able to do that. Uh, the R number is really important, but the R number will be influenced uh, also by the, the numbers of people who have immunity uh, in the, the population. And also, uh, having an R number close to one is, is always going to be a worry, but it is less of a worry if your incidence is lower, if the number of new cases you're having every day is lower, because then the, the higher R number is not going to increase them as, as quickly. Uh, if your incidence is higher, then that R number closer to one is, is a, a bigger worry. And our judgment right now is that both in terms of uh, case numbers, but also the R number is where the risk of moving too quickly is right now. But that is a, a judgment that moves and develops on a daily basis. Um, in terms of uh, setting out the plan, so Willie Rennie is right. We, we can't stay as we are forever. Although, as I've said repeatedly, getting back to complete normality is probably not going to be possible until there's a vaccine or, or treatment. So we'll be living with aspects of this for a significant time uh, to come. But we start to have to, to ease things um, to get a semblance of normality back. I would hope uh, over the course of next week to set out what we think the phasing of that will be. Um, and, but I will say very openly at that point that all of that will be subject to a degree of uncertainty because we have to continue to look very carefully. If you look at other countries right now, you know, Germany uh, has seen an increase in its R number as it starts to ease things. There are obviously new outbreaks in, in South Korea right now. Uh, there's new cases for the first time in quite a while being seen in Wuhan. Uh, as measured. So we, we have to, to monitor this very carefully. We will set out the, uh, the, the, the potential phasing of that as soon as we uh, are able to do that um, and try to get as much normality back as possible. One thing I'd say, President Officer, there's a, a focus understandably on the economy and getting people back to work. And I'm as anxious to do that as anybody is for obvious reasons. But we have to also think about the social and, and family aspects of this. And what I'm really conscious of is if we try to you know, put all of our focus on getting people back to work, but see every other aspect of their life has to stay in lockdown, we're actually, for people's quality of life, we're making decisions there that are really, uh, really difficult. So I'm as anxious about the economy, but I also want to think about how we start to get some quality of family and, and community life back uh, for people as well. My last point, President Officer, because I know you're probably getting irritated at the length of this answer, is that TTI is a key part of this. But TTI, our capacity there, which we're building up and, and rapidly building up, will always have to be able to be flexed because your need for that capacity will depend uh, a lot on what your incidence and prevalence of the, the infection is. So if, if we suddenly have lots of outbreaks, you need more TTI capacity than you will if, if it's lower. So I would caution people against, of course, scrutinise a lot what we're doing around testing and contact tracing capacity, but I would caution against this idea that you get to X date and you just have the capacity that you will need on a fixed basis. We're always going to have to be prepared to flex that as we go. My apologies for the length of the answer, President Officer.